is me again. I'm in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Can you guess what's in Lynchburg, Tennessee? Uh-huh. Jack Daniel is one of my favorites. In 1866, the same year that Winchester bought out Henry is when they started the distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Now, it was the first distillery to have a license in the United States. And the mastermind, uh, Jasper Newton Daniels, otherwise known as Jack Daniels, was the mastermind behind the old number seven flavor of uh, Tennessee whiskey. And that is the same recipe used to this day. Now he claims that a big part of their flavor is the limestone water that they use that's only found in Lynchburg, Tennessee, along with corn, rye, and barley. Not only is the same recipe used to this day, but the Lynchburg, Tennessee location is the only place in the world where they ship out Jack Daniels whiskey. At first, Jack Daniels was only distributed to taverns and saloons by the barrel. But then in 1890, he decided to bottle it and uh, he used a ceramic bottle and it was a clear substance. As you can see, it has evolved throughout the years to that golden dark color that we all love so much. Jack Daniels died in 1911 and he's buried in this cemetery, but you know how he died? Usually his secretary got to work before him and she opened up the safe. Well, he got into work early one day. He couldn't get the safe open, so he kicked it and ended up getting gangrene in his foot. They cut his leg off and eventually he died from gangrene. The moral of that story is never get to work early. Y'all know that. And I'm here with my newest, bestest friend, Brandy. How you doing, Brandy? Hey. How are y'all? Um, now, Brandy, just give us the best tour ever of this uh, place here. I got a couple questions for you if you got some time. Okay. All right, first of all, uh, who is the master brewer now? The master distiller is Jeff Arnett. All right, and, uh, and for what you told me, that, that you're one of those that tastes it. How many, people, how many tasters do you have? We have about 50 tasters that do the type of tasting that I do. Um, we have about 50 more that do a different type, and then we have 21 master tasters. Right. And then we have the master distiller and the assistant master distiller. Right. When you got a master bait or tater, uh, taster, and, and uh, like three of them say this ain't good, and then they change the charcoal. That's is right. That right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And then I, I got a question for you. You know, I, we we sampled some stuff. Of course, we had to do that. If I were to want to get me like a barrel of the uh, d double uh, barreled and double filtered, mm -hmm. what what would a barrel cost me? Well, if you were wanting to get the barrel of single barrel whiskey, it would be nine to twelve thousand dollars on average. Nine to twelve thousand. Can you put a bow on that? Yeah, sure. All right, <laughs> deliver one out to my pickup. I got one last thing, and I thank you for helping no me problem. out today. You did a great job. But you know, brandy's dandy. That's right. But liquor's, liquor's quicker. quicker. See you again. I'm in Nashville, and I'm at Antique Archaeology. Frank, Mike, the gang—they're all hanging out in California right now. I found a jacket. I want to check it out. They only want 1,050 for it. I went up and asked them, can you get it a size bigger? I might take it. Peace out, OMG. Thank you. <laughs> I'm in Nashville finally, and I made it to the Ryman Auditorium. Check it out. And I have to be here with one of my dearest old friends, little Jimmy Dickens. Say hi, little Jimmy. Can you tell me one song he did? I remember. May the bird of paradise fly up your nose. Peace out. Just walking down Broadway in Nashville. Everywhere you turn, there's music. Good, I'm out in front of Tootsie's. Check it out. Some of the people that have played in Tootsie's, Willie Nelson was noted to sit at Tootsie's and drink until he'd hear it over the radio that the next person at the Ryman was going to be Willie Nelson. He said it was 38 steps from here to the Ryman and he'd make it for his show. Tootsie's. Like the song says in Nashville, Everybody plays and everybody sings. The only one was my dad and me. We drove her out to Tennessee. She's still here now. He's gone. So I Yeah, I'm just wrong, wrong, you know.
Again, and I'm in Nashville and I'm at this cute little place called Benchmarks and I just ran into my newest bestest friend Kaylee Hill. How are you doing Kaylee? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing great. Now she just got done with an awesome set. Now I went up and asked her to do some Atlanta Morris set. You ought to know and she ended her show with one of her songs that says, I think you ought to know him. Is that right? I just thought that you should. I just thought that you should know. What a great job you did girlfriend. You got an incredible voice. Now you were telling me earlier that uh, you were on The Voice. Is that correct? It was. I was on season 15. Team Blake. Team Blake, okay, was that pre-Miranda or post-Miranda? Post-Miranda. Okay, uh, I'm assuming that he was the ultimate professional though. Oh yeah, so nice, such a great guy. That's great. Now, I gotta ask you, you know, when, you, when, you get, when you're with, uh, with him, and does he like take you and uh, say you should sing it this way or bring people yeah, in? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I got to work with him and Keith Urban and they were both very helpful. They Wonderful. gave me lots of pointers. That's wonderful. I gotta ask you too now, from your experience as voice, I'm sure it was a great experience. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. Changed my life. And, and, and that's what I was gonna ask you as far as changing your life. Did it open some doors? Did it uh, take you up a step in price or anything? Yeah, I'd say a little bit. You know, everybody likes to hear that you're on the voice that gets people excited. And so it has helped in different ways. But I would say the biggest thing that I can do is just continue hustling on my own because that's really where I'm gonna make my, my footprint. And, and you said earlier something about, hey, everybody, get online, uh, Facebook friend me or something, because yeah. it helps, makes record producers want to know? Yeah, 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 for sure. So if you just got a lot of Facebook followers or something, you get more? That would help, right? because, I mean, they see it as like you're putting fans in seats. So if I were to tour, that would hopefully be a representation of the fans that would come support me. Exactly. So now, to get people to do that, tell them how they do that. So. You can go to Kaylee Hill Official on Instagram at Kaylee Hill. It's K A Y L E Y H I L L, or Kaylee Hill Official on Facebook, and like and follow me there. She is awesome. I seen her on The Voice. I couldn't believe when I walked in she was here. Thank you, Kaylee. Oh, it's my pleasure. All right, we'll see you. Then, <laughs> and we'll see you on uh, on the record labels. I hope so. All right, peace out, O M G. Thank you. <laughs> In Nashville, it seems like all the big stars own nightclubs. They must need to put their money somewhere, like Dirk Bentley, Luke Bryan, uh, Jason Aldean, and even the badass himself, Kid Rock. And when you're in Nashville, you never know who you're going to run into. Check it out. Did I ever tell you how much I love classic country?
finally made it to the Grand Ole Opry. Hey, I tell you what, everybody's played here from Roy Acup to little Jimmy Dickens to Patsy Cline all the way up to Luke to Garth. All the biggies have played here and so have I. Check it out. Peace out. OMG. Thank you. I'm backstage checking out some of the dressing rooms of some of the iconic classic country crooners. This here was Loretta Lynn's dressing room. She may have taken a dump right here. Also, been checking out some of their attire. This six foot circle is part of the original stage at the Ryman Theater. I did, well, yeah, actually. Um, Girls, if you all can step further that way, please. Are you ready? Yeah. One, two. Not, I'd be remiss if I didn't get the same. Oh, for it. Preacher man says it's the end of time. And Mississippi River, she's gone dry. Interest is up in the stock market down. You only get drunk if you go downtown, and a country boy can survive. A country boy can survive.